I've ridden around this farm my entire life on a four-wheeler. And on March 1st of 2008, my life changed when I came in contact with this down power line. So when I woke up, I knew that I had been electrocuted. I knew what had happened. And I looked down at my hands, and my left thumb was kind of dangling. You know, it was, I guess that's where electricity come out. But the others didn't look that bad, you know. I mean, they were, and I tell people it was almost like a stroke victim. You know, I couldn't move my, my fingers. They were just stuck where they were. I didn't think it was really that big of a deal. And then I, this doctor didn't know that I was there or didn't know who I was, that, you know, I was connected. And he said, this kid's going to, this kid could lose his hands. And I thought, oh my, like, does that really, like, does that really happen? Like, is, is that possible? And sometimes I still think back at um, how somebody's life can change so fast. I mean, you think of a power line that is three-eighths in diameter, and you're on one side of it, and you're perfectly normal and fine, and then within a split second, you're on the other side of a power line, and you're a bilateral amputee. It's amazing how you can remember, you can remember what it was like to hold something. And you remember the texture of things. And you remember how your hand would grasp against something else. You know, even, even today, I have people come up to me and say, there's no way that I can do what you do. Or there's no way that I would ever be able to have the attitude that you had. And my response is, you can if you want to. And it's all about making your mind up and, and believing that anything is possible, you know. And, and then my wife, you know, she uh, was willing to be my mom, nurse, wife, and everything in between. Whenever you say those vows, for better or for worse, she definitely stood up whenever it was for worse. And, you know, she became a single mom while I was trying to learn how to be a human being again, really, because I didn't have anything. Um, you know, she helped me do things that I would have never imagined she would have ever helped me do, put my clothes on, feed me, bathe me, um, all the stuff that is kind of embarrassing to have somebody help you with. From day one, whenever I woke up, I was always wanting to make jokes out of it, just to make everybody else more comfortable being around me. I would rather have people talk to me than I would walk by and you see their head kind of turn while you're walking past them. And so I got a shirt made that says, look, ma, no hands. And it makes people stop and it makes people want to talk. And then they even tell me when they see that shirt, and I love your attitude. I don't know your story, but I love your attitude. When I first start looking back at, at using prosthetics, every day I came out and I did little things. I remember the first time I ever changed the oil in my lawnmower. It didn't need to be changed. It was more for me to, to just try. You know, a lot of people don't try. And uh, without prosthetics, I wouldn't be able to do it at all. And, uh, but with prosthetics, it allows me to do just about anything that I want to do. I've done, I've done everything that I've always wanted to do plus more. We used to build all these cars, and I ran dirt lake models. I would actually bend it, cut it, cut it to shape. I stickered it. I did, I did everything on these cars, so. I still enjoy, you know, messing with race cars, and, and other than that, I like to uh, hunt, so I got some of my hunting stuff on the wall. Who knows, it, it might not be my last time in a race car, so. You're able to get into the different modes pretty easily. Yeah. 
Can you rotate both of those guys out for me? Come on back in. And then close for me. I know the difference between prosthesis. I have been in one, that, a general prosthesis, and then I've been to an upper limb uh, specialist that only do upper limbs. And the difference is unbelievable. So Shelly, what we want to do is try to extend this plastic out. I learned very quickly that going to an upper limb specialist like Advanced Arm Dynamics, that they make prosthetics where they're comfortable. They make the socket where it feels like it's a part of me. In order to be the best that I could be, I had to make the move to Advanced Arm Dynamics. And truly, I, I, you know, they have done so much for me. You have to want to wear the arm. You want it to feel like it's a part of you. And that's the way I feel. I feel like this is me. That's awesome, Jason. I talk to patients a lot that have never had OT experience. And I think it's a shame. I had an occupational therapist that worked with scar management. She worked with conditioning my muscles, getting it ready for myoelectrics. After you get your prosthetics, they help you learn how to use it the mechanical way, a uh, certain posture so that your back don't hurt when you're older. I like the robotic look. It's, uh, I think it's cool. It, it's got so many fe features. You know, it, I have wrist rotators in mind. It, um, very easy to use. I have an app which will control 24 different grip patterns. It's amazing at what this hand can do. And I love wearing it. Can you say yay? Yay! yay. So on a typical day for me, as soon as I get up in the morning, I put my prosthetic on. I go into the room where all the kids are running around and we eat breakfast together. And then most of the time I'll go into town. There's a lot of days that I'll go hunting. There's days that I go out to my shop just to do something. The biggest part of my life is my children, though, and, and being able to play with them. There you go. There you go, and then after dinner, me and my wife will sit in the living room, we'll watch a little TV, and we'll put the kids to bed, say our prayers. Love you tonight. All right, I'll see you in the morning. I love you, buddy. And the whole entire time I had my prosthetics on. So Jason, let's tell them again what's going on. Tomorrow night is handing back a big event at the Owensboro Convention Center. Yeah, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we're going to have some inspiration. We're going to have uh, music. We're going to have um, an artist come in, which I'm everybody sorry. knows Kaiser. He's going to he, yeah, yeah. He's gonna come in paint. We've got RoboCop coming. It's going to be neat for me. It's my six-year anniversary of my accident, and uh, it's going to be a way for me to give back to the community. All the money's going to go to charity. So in the last few years, I've had an opportunity to really be on a lot of different things. I've been in the newspapers across the United States. I've been on radio stations all over, uh, some as far as Mexico and Hawaii. I've been on uh, several news channels. I've been on uh, Hawaii Five-O, uh, Al Jazeera American Network, Techno TV show. Uh, Sanjay Gupta on CNN. I've been on regular CNN news. I've been on the a new commercial, the Apple commercial. It really isn't about popularity or um, being famous or anything like that. It all has to do with I'm sharing my story. I'm doing what I think God wants me to do, to share with people more about not about me, but more about having hope and determination to get through any situation you can get through because anybody can do what I've done.